Mills Young here. Who's ready to bet on UFC? Me. That's who. So I'm about to go over the whole card for you guys, okay? I'm going to let you guys know all 13 fights on the card, which ones to bet on, which ones I'm betting on, and what's the ways that I'm, win I'm leaning for the fighter to win. But before we do that, I need all you guys to go ahead and let me know what you guys are betting on for this UFC card. Headlined by Dos Anjos versus Vicente Luque. So let me know who's going to be your best underdog. Who's your straight up lock of the week? Who's your best two team fighter parlay? And what's your prop to get you on top? Let me know in the comments below. All right. So over here, I pick dogs. You ready to get it on? I am. Let's knock out the bookies. All right. Cool. First fight of the night taking place in the women's flyweight division. Juliana Miller. Three wins, two losses. Taking on Luana Santos. Five wins, one loss. Luana Santos is a favorite at a minus 150 in here. And she's going to be making her UFC debut. Juliana Miller won the UFC uh, Ultimate Fighter competition uh, on there. I was able to make money on her versus Brogan Walker. Um, and then she did let us down her last time out. She did face defeat. She was a big favorite. But now she's coming back an underdog. And if you ask me in here, I think the dog's out the cage in this one. I think Juliana Miller gets it done inside the distance. Moving on to the second fight. All right, this fight just got thrown on the card because the original opponent had to pull out. Damian Blackshear, 13 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, taking on uh, Jose Johnson, 15 wins, 7 losses. This is going to be taking place in the Bantamweight division. The original opponent was... um. What was his name? Uh, Brady Heiston. It was supposed to be De Demond Blackshaw versus Brady Heiston. Brady Heiston had to pull out. They pulled Ho Jose Johnson to come in uh, and replace him. Jose Johnson made his debut on the UFC Contender Series. Wasn't able to get the contract, but he was able to get a couple of fights in the UFC. Um, then after that, didn't go on, I don't think, any wins with the UFC. Demond Blackshaw, on the other hand, he's been like a back-and-forth fighter. Uh, he had that draw with uh, Yusuf Zalau. Uh, in there, but you know, when DeMar Blackshirt comes out there on top of his game, he's able to win fights in there, you know. So he has like that wrestling type of background pedigree that can definitely win you fights in here. The odds, though, he opened up a minus 350 favorite. He was able to get the win out in his last time out. I think uh, DeMar Blackshirt gets the job done in here, but um, that price tag right there, I think, is a solid parlay piece for you guys if you guys want to parlay it. All right, moving on down the car. Third fight of the night. This one's going to be taking place in the women's strawweight division. All right, Monster Ruiz uh, is taking on Jacqueline Amorin. A uh, six and one record taking on Ruiz, who has a ten and two uh, record. Okay, last time we seen Jacqueline out there, man, she was a big favorite and she lost, but she was making her UFC debut. Um, a lot of people think she just gassed. You know, she overexerted herself. She usually finishes all her fights in the first round. She wasn't able to get that one done against Sam Hughes, and Sam Hughes got it done on her. Um, because after that, in that second round, Jacqueline just. Forgot how to fight. Um, but she's top tier when it comes to her jujitsu. I'm gonna be going back to the well with her. She's a minus two forty out there, right there. Um, I think she's a solid parlay piece to get back on the winning track and show the people in the UFC um what she's all about. So I say Jacqueline gets the fight done in there. Next fight on the card taking place. This one's going to be for the big boys, heavyweights. Josh Parisian, 15 wins, 6 losses, taking on Martin Boudet, 12 wins, 1 loss. All right, Josh Parisian is the underdog. Martin Boudet is the favorite. Minus 200 on the books, you know, 2-1 to one favorite out there. Martin Boudet has been able to put together some wins in the UFC, some wins that a lot of people think that he shouldn't have won. Uh, one of those fights I was at, um, you know, I actually had a bet on him until um, we thought he was going to lose, but the judges gave it to him. He's a big guy for the division. He can make this fight real easy if he's able to clinch him, get him up against the cage, and even use some takedowns, which he won't. But if he just keeps it on the feet, striking, I still like him in there. Martin Boudet to get the job done at a 2-1 to one favor. I like him a lot in here. I bet him when he came out at a minus 190 straight. Um, so I think he gets the job done. Next fight on the card. I like this one a lot. It's going to be taking place in the featherweight division. Uh, that's the 145 weight class. Francis Marshall, seven wins, one loss is the slight favorite on there. Minus 150. Going to be taking on Isaac Dogarian, 5-0, and oh, uh, who's making his uh, UFC debut after making it on the UFC Contender Series. 
I know about Dargarian a lot. Um, he's one of those guys that just goes for the takedowns. I made money with him last time uh, on the UFC Contender Series. He's taking on Francis Marshall. Francis Marshall wasn't able to get the job done in his last fight out, but before that, he was able to get the win. I actually like the way Francis Marshall fights too as well. Um, if you ask me now, I think this fight can go either way. It's a 50-50 fight. A lot of people was questioning Isaac Dargarian's gas tank because they haven't seen him pass the first round. I think the dog's live in there, man. You know, just, uh, yeah, I think the dog's live in this fight, if you ask me. I like Francis Marshall, too. But, yeah, I just, I think the dog's, I think the dog's live. Isaac Dargarian gets the job done in this one. Uh, yeah, but not one that I'm running to the book to bet or anything. Just something I'm probably going to sit back and watch. Next fight taking place in the lightweight division. Who we got? We got Terrence McKinney. All right. Record 13 wins, 6 losses. Taking on Mike Breeden. 10 wins, 5 losses. Terrence McKinney, big favorite. 3 to 1 favorite on there. Uh, we made money against him last time out. He faced Nazim Sadikov, and we had Nazim Sadikov as a premium play on there, and he got the job done in the second round uh, without a question asked. He's taking on Mike Breed, and Mike Breed is not one of those fighters that anybody's going to even remember uh, in the division in here. I'm, I'm surprised he's getting another shot in here, but I'm not, man. I'm not one of those guys that's going to be betting Terrence McKinney out of minus 280, minus 300. I actually only bet him once, I want to say, uh, since he's gotten the UFC. I used to bet him on LFA. Um, I'm going to just keep it nice and sweet. If you don't want to lose your money, don't bet on Terrence McKinney, folks. Don't parlay him and think that he's a lock because he's a 3-1 to one favorite. Just don't. Yeah, thank me later. All right, moving on down the car. Still holding the prelims, though. This one's going to be taking place, man. All right, at the 135 weight class, we got Marcus Maniac McGee. Seven wins, one loss, representing for the lab, MMA lab out there in uh, Arizona. Phoenix, all right. He's a big favorite, though. Minus 375 is what he's at right now. Taking on J.P. Bryce, nine wins, five losses. J.P. Bryce just been on the wrong end of the stick in his last couple of fights out there. Can't get no wins in there. Um, you know, but he's a good wrestler who once he gets you down to the ground, he's looking to take your back. And he's not just looking to lay there. He's looking to submit you. Marcus McGee is a maniac, just like his nickname says. When he's inside the cage, he's usually trying to finish you inside the distance. That's how he gets it done. We made money with him last time out. He made his UFC debut, caught up on short notice, fought Johnny Newsom and beat him. On top of that, I was able to talk to Marcus McGee after the fight, too. Did an interview with him. Um, if you guys want to check that out on YouTube. Uh, just look up MMA Locker Room on YouTube, interview Marcus McGee. Um, but yeah, he's one of those fighters to where when he comes in there, man, he's, he, he has that striking value. The way he's going to put an onslaught of uh, strikes on you. He's going to go high. He's going to go low. He's going to hit you with jabs, counters, crosses, uh, knees, anything. Uh, but the one thing he does struggle with is takedowns. And if somebody takes down him... Sometimes he's not able to get up, you know. Um, his one loss was him getting choked out. But in there, he kind of tapped prematurely. Right when the guy grabbed his neck, he just kind of tapped real quick. Talk to him about that fight. You know, he said he learned a lot from then. Um, but, yeah, so uh, I think Marcus McGee's live here. I think he's a good parlay piece. But I wouldn't say that he's, like, your number one parlay piece. J.P. Byers has a path to victory, okay? Like I said, if he takes his back, he moves quick and powerful and strong. And I'm going to just throw it out there, too, because I've been hearing about it. Shout out to Jacob out there, man, doing his thing on, uh, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think he might even have his girl back, his wife back. You know, you know, supposedly his wife left him, got with that other fighter. But been hearing a lot of stuff and, you know, uh, good facts when we're talking about, uh, you know, she's back in Vegas. He's fighting at the same facilities and stuff like that so that confidence can get you right back on the winning side you know um because he was without his significant other yes folks that plays a part when it comes to fighting this mma trust me the storylines matter so if you ask me in here i like marcus mcgee to get it done i'm gonna be betting him to win inside the distance just because i'm loyal to the soil but for the people out there if you think you're just gonna parlay big number fighters and win in mma that's not always the recipe. 
Unless it's a bulletproof one. All right, moving on down the card. This one's going to be taking place in the middleweight division. Josh Frame, 10 wins, 4 losses. Taking on Jamie Pickett, 13 wins, 9 losses. Josh Frame, last time out, he was able to get the win against uh, one of the guys that I'm cool with in the UFC game named uh, Cedric Dumas. Uh, you know, he was able to get the win in there, take him out, and, uh, you know, subbed him uh, in the fight. But before that, he was on the losing Losing streak of, you know, the things. Now he's taking on who? Jamie Pickett. Jamie Pickett last time out, he fought Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel was like a minus 2,000 favorite, minus 1,800 favorite. Long story short, Bo Nickel was able to get the job done. Um, But Jamie Pickett's no slouch, man. He shows up in fights. Um, You know, he's a decent striker. Um, You know, he can mix it up with power, too. Um, You know, his defense always isn't the best once he gets hit. But uh, he can move in and out range, uh, in and out the pocket, too, without no problem. Uh, the betting line is Josh Frim at a minus three to one favorite in here. I, I like Josh Frim to get the job done in here, though. So I think Josh Frim gets the job done. Moving on down the card, standing in the middleweight division. This one is going to be a banger. But, 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 banger. Banger. To find the Chukui, six wins, three losses. Steps back in the middleweight division after going up to the light heavyweight division. Takes on AJ Dobson, uh, six wins, two losses. Kind of identical when it comes to the records, okay? Now, the gambling odds had to find out a minus 150 favorite. Now, the money's coming in on Dobson. You can get to find out like a minus 135 favorite on there. AJ Dobson, um, you know, he's one of those guys to where if he mixes in his wrestling and his takedowns with his striking, he could be good. He could be real good, but sometimes he just doesn't do it in the fights, you know, that we're seeing so far in the UFC. Tafani Chukwe, good kickboxer, good striker, you know, he's out there, you know, uh, you know, pawing you with the jab, you know, setting up the low kicks and stuff. Um, but this is the thing. Um, we really can't trust him in the UFC either. You know, he hasn't been a trustworthy fighter. If you ask me, I like the dog. I think the dog's out the cage in this one. Give me AJ Dobson at the plus money in here to go ahead and get the job done. Moving on down the car. All right, this fight, it's going to be a banger, man. It's going to be in the ladies' fight uh, weight class, uh, the 115 weight class. Pollyanna Vera, 13 wins, 5 losses, taking on Yasmin Lucindo, 14 wins and 5 losses. I was able to see Yasmin fight live, um, you know, in San Diego uh, a while back, and it was one of the best women fights ever. Um, you know, she was a big underdog in there. She wasn't able to get the job done. But it was a good fight. Pollyanna Vienna, her last fight out, I had a play on her as a big underdog. And she was able to get that one done striking. She knocked the girl out, which a lot of people thought Pollyanna Vienna would never ever do. Because she's usually the type of fighter to pull guard, fall on her back, and try to submit you. Yeah, Lasman, she can go for takedowns when she wants to. She's decent at striking. She's a minus 180 favorite in there. I'll be honest with you guys, man. Um, This fight could go either way. And the way Pollyanna's been looking um, lately, putting it together with the striking, I think the dog might be out the cage in this one, too. So I'm definitely not betting this one. But um, if I was, I, I would be taking the plus money with Pollyanna Vienna to get it done. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I like both fighters, though. So just tread lightly on that one if you guys ask me. If you guys got a better read on that one, please tell me so down below. All right, next fight on the main card. This one's going to be another banger, man. Taking place in the light heavyweight division. Khalil Roundtree, 11 wins, 5 losses. Opened up a minus 160 favorite, up to a minus 175 out there. Taking on Chris Dawkins, 12 wins, 6 losses. Stepping down at his weight class from the heavyweight division. Chris Dawkins, good boxer. He was a guy that was a part-time cop. Put down the cop and badge to train full-time for the UFC. But check this out. Ever since he did, he hasn't really been winning. So I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe he needs to go back to doing that part time, too. Sometimes, you know, it's like, all right, you put down this and you dedicate your life and more in the gym. You think you're going to improve this much? He actually haven't. And I think if he loses this fight, he might be on his way out. Khalil Roundtree, though, he's one of those strikers to where he can fight out of 185 weight class, move up to a 205 uh, weight class where he's been at. Uh, he parks a lot of power, um, you know, um, a real good Muay Thai practitioner. I like Khalil Roundtree to get it done. He's a minus 170 favorite. I bet that straight out of minus 160. I think he gets the job done inside the distance as well. Moving on down the card. Co-main event time. 
All right, this one's going to be a good one. Hakeem, the mean dream dog would do. 13 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw. Uh, going to be taking on Cup Swanson. This one's going to be taking place in the featherweight division. All right, let's get down to the gambling odds because that's what they pay us here for our pick dogs. Gambling odds, you got Hakeem Dawood do a minus 200 favorite. To come back on Cup Swanson, you know, you can get it anywhere from like a plus 145 to a plus 150 out there. All right, but me... I like the way Hakeem Dawudu comes out here and strikes. You know, 13 wins, 3 losses. He's a good, um, definitely Muay Thai striker. The path to victory would be the leg kicks, okay? Cub Swanson last fight out against Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan Martinez was able to do whatever he wanted to to uh, Cub Swanson's legs. He got the knockout in there, too. Hakeem Dawudu, when he's striking at your legs, he's vicious in there, man. Um, you know, um, certain fights he has 30 leg kicks in other fights he has 17 leg kicks in the average one he has about 21 leg kicks in so whenever he's getting wins that's what he's doing folks he's kicking them legs and that's something that cup Swanson's is going to be struggling with he just stepped back up to this weight class after going down to fight jonathan martinez and wasn't able to get the job done uh, cup swanson has been fighting since 2004 around the year i graduated high school wow and he's still fighting but all right the the odds is off I don't like Hakeem Dawudu at a minus 220. So let's go ahead and take him to win by decision at a plus 160. Whatever it is out there, get you some plus money on it. I think Hakeem Dawudu gets the job done by decision. He's not a fighter that's going out there to finish. He's a fighter that's going out there not to lose. Um, So, yeah, man, I, I like Hakeem Dawudu to get it done. Real big fan of this guy, too, man. And I'm, I'm going to take it on a further note. He might not get it done by decision. He might just go out there and finish my man Cup Swanson. Not my man Cup Swanson, but he might just finish Cup Swanson. You want to know why, man? Sometimes, you know, narratives play stories, but watching him in media day and signing his posters and stuff like that when he was traveling, he had a uh, in memory of somebody uh, picture on his shirt, you know, like a, a dedication to somebody that recently just passed away or something. So for me, I just think that gives fighters sometimes, you know, a little bit more reasons to fight. And just when, when they go in there, they just kind of zone out and think about other things sometimes. So, uh, yeah, man, I really like Hakeem Dawudu to get this one done in here. Um, So, yeah, uh, I think he gets this one done for the co-main event. Good to see him back in the co-main event uh, fight, too. Uh, yeah, man, we've been waiting to see him back in the cage. All right, main event time. But before the main event time, if you guys want to see what I'm betting on, head on over to Pick Dogs, man. I got all my picks up there uh, for you guys for today to get paid. I'm going to be putting my UFC bets up there shortly. So, yeah, you can get your three-day pass now. Or else you can just wait for them uh, single individually. Check out what the other cappers got going, too. Um, that's where you can find us at, though. But so far on this card, man, who are you guys liking out the dogs? Okay. All right, well, we'll see, man. If they win, I'm going to look at your comments, and I'll shout you out next time I record. Let's go. Main event time. Rafael Daniels Anjos. What did I just say? Man, see, that's why. Rafael Dos Anjos, man, taking off Vicente Luque, man. When it comes down to his two UFC vests with a lot of experience, Rafael Dos Anjos is 3-1 out of his last four fights. He's opening up the odds at a minus 110 favorite versus Vicente Luque. If this fight happens, I'm taking RDA. I think he's going to be able to win. All right, when it comes down to it, I can see him being like a wet blanket, sleeping bag type style. He's one of those fighters to where he knows what to do. Fight IQ, I give him a B plus. So in other words, if he's striking, if it's not going, this way he's gonna go for the takedowns uses all the tools in his toolbox he'll go from a body lock switch it up to a single leg lock if that ain't working bam he clinches up you know acts like he's gonna strike you up uh you know a couple of jabs press you up the cage and do the same thing and try to get you down to the ground he knows how to win i remember when he beat uh showtime anthony pettis took the belt from him real quick still remember man i, I was mad at him man i was a big pettis fan back then i was like who is this guy what he do but yeah man rafael dos Anjos, when it comes down to it, he's gonna be in the Hall of Fame at UFC, okay? Uh, Vicente Luque, he's coming off of a loss over Jeff Neal to where, you know, he had got a brain hemorrhage in there. Had to take some time off. The reason why I say if this fight goes on, I think it's going to get canceled after the weigh-ins for some reason. I think the doctors and the administration is going to be like, I'm sorry, we're just not letting them go out. Let's just say Vicente Luque's, Luque misses weight by one and a half pounds. That's going to bring up all these other factors, all these other matters, but... Yeah, who knows? But Sente Luque, though, got to give him his props, man. It's the first time he's ever been, like, labeled an underdog in a fight. It's one of those fighters that goes out there and leaves it all out there. 
But that's the whole thing. He leaves it all out there, man. He's always out there engaging into a broad. Striking defense isn't good. His takedown defense isn't the best either. And, you know, he's one of those guys that's not going to change up the way that he's been fighting. He's been fighting for this long and it worked for him now. You know, but now... Hey, nobody was able to put him out until Jeff Neal. Um, until then, now he's taking his first fight back since then. So we'll see, man. Good main event. All right, all right. Went through the whole card. Mills Young here, part of Pick Dogs, man. If you guys want to check out exactly what I'm betting on, head on over to the site right now. See what we got going up for you guys, all right? All right. Now, before we do that, I just want to tell you guys one thing. When you're betting on MMA, just make sure... You got the plays to get you paid and the props to get you on top. And you know how you get that is right over here at Pick Dogs. See you guys same time next week. Mills Young here, part of Pick Dogs. If you can't roll with the Pick Dogs, stay on the porch.